Speedometer 2 is a tool that I've used many times before to test the JavaScript and web application performance on my machines, the M1 Max, M1 Ultra, M1, and compared it to other machines like Intel, for example. Many of you have said that Speedometer is a good test, but uh, hey, can we open multiple tabs and run Speedometer? Well, the answer to that is no, you can't, because if Speedometer is in the background or in a closed or backgrounded tab, it's not going to run. It's going to wait until until you return to that tab again. So how do we create or simulate a multi-core test? Some of you are curious about that because uh, for example, if you're a web developer and you're running multiple browser windows at the same time while you're developing, you wanna see how that performs. Now there are real multi-core tests that I've already done here as well. Check out other videos in this channel to see that. So today I'm gonna to try to hack speedometer to see if we can get it to uh, become a multi-core test instead of a single core test, okay? A little bit of a different kind of video today, but hey, why not? So first of all, let's address a couple things here. And this is related to some of the comments you've left in the past. And you've mentioned that you have to run this test in full screen mode, only on one screen and don't touch anything while it's running. Let's see if that's the case. So I'm gonna open up new Chrome instance. And yes, I am using Chrome because Chrome has shown to be the fastest in this latest OS or whatnot. Um, it's even faster than Safari in the latest OS on this test. I don't know why, very weird. But I am gonna pop open an incognito tab and let's get a baseline here. I'm gonna maximize the window full screen. This is running on the M1 Max MacBook Pro, by the way. I'm like what's making all that noise? I got the Intel machine underneath my desk here and that's what's recording the audio for this video. So I'm not using the resources of this machine. That's what's making the noise. It's coming from underneath the desk. <laughs> <laughs> we got a score of 309 folks, which is pretty darn good. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is shrink that window, shrink it to that size. Now, if we get about the same score, then it doesn't matter what size the window is. You know what, let's make it even smaller. There we go, test again. Let's see what happens. Now, yes, theoretically here, if the size of the window is large, it has to render more. If the window is tiny, it's not gonna render as much of the application and therefore maybe it'll do this quicker. So we're about to find out because I haven't done this either. 284, so it's a, a smaller score than the bigger window, which is the opposite of what should happen theoretically. So I'm not worried about having a different size window. Now, let's have two of these tests running side by side and see if that even works. So I'm gonna have each one of these take up about half the window size horizontally and let's test here and here at the same time. Look at that, they're both running as long as they're in different browsers. So the idea here is maybe I can programmatically pop open a bunch of windows and have them run at the same time and execute the JavaScript programmatically. Okay, that's fine. 270, pretty close on both of them. Next, I wanna check to see if running one of these is in fact using one of the cores. So I'm gonna open up Activity Monitor. Let's take a look at the CPU there. I'm gonna have a look at the CPU history and let's test one of these. I'm only running one of them, okay? And I'm seeing that we have some stuff going on on the efficiency cores and we also have some activity on cores three, four, five, six, seven, and a little bit on eight and maybe a tiny bit on nine and ten but mostly on three we got a score of 304 there let's have a look here at this activity monitor not the history but the activity monitor itself and i'm gonna run this one more time now if this comes to about a hundred percent usage that's telling me that it's using one core so is it using a little bit more than one core maybe Let's do two of these tabs, all right? This one and this one at the same time. Let's have a look at the activity monitor there and the history. Each one of the Google Chrome processes is taking up about 120. So it was a taller history tower, all right? I'm gonna open up two more of these. Okay, let's just have them all open at the same time. And let's return back home so it's easy to click the button. I'm gonna run four tabs, four windows, I should say, not tabs, windows. One, two, three. Come on, and four. Okay, they're all running. This should mean a taller tower still. And there's four processes right there. Each one of them is taking about 120 to 128%. And yeah, the tower is taller and it's running on all these other CPUs. It's not so cut and dry anymore that when running this on one window that it's using up only one core. It's a little bit more messy than that. However, it's still a valid experiment because I have four of these open now and it's showing numbers about the same 
It's in the same vicinity, 287 to 310. My hope is that if I automate this and have a lot more of the windows open at the same time, then maybe we'll see even more CPU cores being used. Let's see if I can do this using Python. Okay, it's saying to use the web browser module. So um, let's create a new folder. Let's call this automate speedometer. Okay, and I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio Code. This is gonna be a Python project. So let's call this start.py. Now it's time for copy and pasting code. <laughs> right here, I'm gonna copy that and paste it. Uh, let's see if it can find Chrome by itself without me telling it where the Chrome app is. Oh, web browser get, can we just use web browser dot open? Open new, that could mean open a new window. This is we're in PyEnv shell 2.7. We want a higher version of Python. And I already have Conda environments installed here. Let's see, Conda, ENV list. These are all my environments. By the way, if you don't know what Conda is or how to install it, Conda is a, a basically a way to encapsulate your different Python environments. You can have different versions of Python installed in each environment, different packages. I have a video here showing you how to do all that, how to set up Conda. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, Conda activate W and B. Let's check the version of Python here. 310, perfect. Now, Python and start. Let's save the file. And let's see if this even opens the browser. And let's do it. It worked. <laughs> good, 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 good. Now, how do we size the window? Do we need to size the window? This is another thing I need to try out, isn't it? So I had the windows open in different parts of my screen, but what if the windows overlay each other on top of each other? Let's see, let's open up a new window. Okay, so now one window is sort of blocking the other one, which means the one in the back doesn't technically have to get rendered. Chrome is smart enough to detect that. So let's test it out. I'm gonna start this test and I'm gonna start the other test and I'm gonna keep it on this window to see if the one in the back is going to finish. And you know what, let's take a look at the processes. Sorry for the blinking folks. Uh, it looks like both of them are in fact running and they're both running at about 120%. So yeah, looks like they're both working. Let's have a peek at the other one, it's done also. So the reason I wanted to do this is because now I don't need to worry about sizing the windows and arranging them on the screen. I can just say, open up a bunch of windows and run this test, right? So let's go back to the code and let's try doing that. Let's try using web browser to open up the URL twice. Okay, Python start. Oh, it opened up two tabs. That's not gonna work for sure. I've already tried that. It needs to be two separate windows. This one says to use Selenium. Selenium is a tool that I've heard of before. It's a way to automate your uh, browsers through code. And this answer right here in Stack Overflow suggests that all you gotta do is just run a sub process and start Chrome manually. Huh, let's see if that works. Start Chrome. Nope, <laughs> I guess you need the sub process module. Okay, here's an example using Selenium. I'm gonna try this. Let's comment out what I've had so far. And uh, let's start this. From Selenium, import web driver. Selenium for Python. Let's, let's see if there's any instructions on how to get this started. Here we go. Introduction and installation. For Chrome, you may need to install Chromium. Do I need to or do I not need to? One can install Firefox, Chromium, Phantom JS, deprecated now. Just give me the steps. Like how are people that are new to this stuff supposed to learn this stuff and figure it out? And what's the next thing I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and figure out how to install Chromium because I don't have that installed. I, don't, I know I don't have that. Let's see. I'm gonna just Google this error right here. Chrome driver, okay. They have a special M1, Mac 64 M1. I'm guessing that's the Apple Silicon version. Let's do that. And it's a zip file, Unix executable. I'm gonna be unsafe and I'm gonna go over to security and privacy and open it anyway, just giving hackers access to my computer. So I'm guessing this is now running. So if I go try to run that script, it should work. Is that what happens? No, it's not what happens. F you, Alex. You are wrong and you don't know what the heck you're doing. So there, now you get the same error message even though you've done all this stuff now. Now I'm gonna Google that error message. Oh, try copying the Chrome driver executable file in the same directory as your Python script. Haven't done that yet. Let's do it. Let's copy that. And you know what? I'm just gonna drag it in here. Boom. Let's clear this and try it. Ah, oh, same error message. 
back to searching. Okay, this can be done automatically using WebDriver Manager. Let's do that. Pip install WebDriver Manager. Now the above code in question will work simply with the below change. So let's try it. Okay, let's try that. It's doing something. It did something. Deprecation warning. You know what? Let's let's just try it. Okay, I'm just gonna say driver dot get URL. No, it's just get I guess, and then the URL which is in this case I don't know. Let's give it a URL. HTTP www dot facebook dot com. Okay, but that's really slow. It opens it and then it closes it. I have no idea why it does that. Should we try the accepted answer then? All right, let's try that. That's pretty simple. Let's try that. No. <sighs> oh, <gasps> that worked. <laughs> okay, that worked. So I'm going to open up this loop again. Let's clean this up a little bit. Code on the internet. There we go. Let's see if it's going to open up three windows. I got to say that's pretty slow. It's pretty slow. And now it's closing them again. Why? I just don't get it. Is there there's a keep alive option that I need to set to true? Really? Is that going to do it? It's not doing it. It's not keeping it alive. OK, you know what? I'm going to copy this code right here and see what happens. I'm going to create a new file here called um, selenium. You know what? <laughs> Start to that py paste that in there. Let's go. Uh, it's complaining about the gecko driver. Chrome driver. Boom. And boom. Let's see if this works. We're on Twitter. Indeed. But is anything happening? It didn't close the browser, though. So maybe that's good. Maybe that's good. Let's uh, let's now find out the URL of the speedometer test and go there. Why the heck not? Why do I look this up every single time? Boom. Speedometer two, folks. Excellent. Now this will let me get an element by XPath. What else can it do? Browser dot get element find element by maybe class name. Let's take a look at this. What's the class name of this button? It doesn't have a class name, but it does have start test text. So what else do we have available here? Find element by link text. Let's try it button and let's click it. This is going to be start button. All right click and all this other stuff. OK, you know what? Let's try this out. Let's close this up and we're going to start this. Let's go. You know what? Let's do this. I'm going to sleep for a while after clicking the button. Let's sleep for that's seconds. I'm guessing. I don't know. 30 seconds. It's working. It did it. It's using up the CPUs and it closed it. OK, not the smoothest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that close button was pretty close to uh, the end of that test. Let's increase that time. And also, can I execute JavaScript here? Because I think there is a JavaScript way to execute this test. Let's go to console. I think there is a start benchmark. Yeah, because I looked at the code before the JavaScript code that's included here. There's a global start benchmark function available. And if you execute it, it's going to run the benchmark. <laughs> Cool, huh? All right, so we can do it by clicking the button. That's fine. Or we can execute the JavaScript. Also fine. Now what I want to do is open up multiple JavaScript or multiple browser uh, windows. OK, so before I create a loop, let's just see if I can do two of these. I also don't really need to close the browser, I suppose. I can keep it open, but I guess my browser needs to be called different here. So browser two, start button two and start button two. OK, not clean, I know, but I just want to see if we can have two windows open at the same time. OK, there is one starts the test and I need another window. There it is. And the test begins. We have it. Two windows open, each running a test. And we are using two processes, two CPUs or more than two, however many it uses, I don't know. So this seems to be working. Very nice. All I got to do is just somehow loop over these to create new ones. I think I'm going to create an array of browser objects and just pop them all open. Browsers equals array for OK, I need a <laughs> All right, give me a break. I just started using Python not too long ago. I need a range. Here we go. This is what I need. So I'm going to create a, a for loop in a range from zero to uh, three. 
and I'm gonna create a browser in there, but I actually wanna push a browser into the array. So browsers.push, is there a push function? Nope, uh, append, append, and the object is gonna be web driver, Chrome driver. Okay, so I've got a bunch of them in there now. Good, I'm gonna just create a bunch of them first. That's fine. Then I'm gonna wait for two seconds. And after that, I'm gonna do it again, another for loop. This time, I'm gonna pull out, well, actually I wanna iterate over the array now, in this case, let's see. Yeah, wow, Python is so simple, I love it. Okay, so for browser, in browsers, oh, yeah, this get right here, this is the long running operation, I think. Well, it takes some time to run this. We don't know when that finishes. And it also takes time to run this and we don't know when the page is ready. That's why we're waiting for two seconds. Browser get, and then we're gonna wait two more seconds. And then we're gonna run the thing again, another loop. I know there's probably better ways of doing this, but that's okay. I'm gonna find the uh, button on the page and then click it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got three browsers. There they are. Okay, we got page one, started the test. Page two is running the test, and page three is running the test. Yes, we're almost there. Almost there. Now all we gotta do is just change that number from six to whatever. But you know what? This is gonna be a pain in the butt to close all these browsers, so I do wanna automate the closing them as well. Let's do that first. So after this is done, Actually, we're gonna sleep first. We're gonna sleep for uh, 60 seconds, sleep for a minute. And then we're gonna close the browsers, right? Browser.close. Okay, I think we're ready. And this number right here, this three, I'm gonna change this to, uh, let's go with six. Gradually expand my test, bigger and bigger. Nice. Now take a look at this, because we got so many of them now, they're not uh, getting up to 120%. Now we're being limited by the CPUs. Okay, so is this a true multi-core test? Is it? Our score is significantly lower now. Oh yeah, 232, 233, 234, 230. Okay, I hope these browsers close by themselves, because I don't want to do it. Yes, <laughs> now I guess I could just spin up a ton of them. I don't know, do something. What the hell am I doing? I forgot what I was doing. What am I doing? Today is a fun day, it's Friday, okay? All right, so I'm spinning up 12 of these bad boys. And after two seconds, they should go to the web page. And after two seconds after that, it should start the test. And now we're running. So is this a multi-core test? <laughs> I don't know, but it sure is a fun one. And I guess maybe this is a good way to um, represent when people have multiple browser windows open, even if you're developing web applications and you have multiple browser windows open and you're changing things and seeing how the change is reflected and synchronized across all your browser windows, maybe this is a good way to do it. I don't know. And maybe this is the way you already do it. Or maybe you're already doing it in a better way. Okay, it should be all done now. And it looks like they all closed down. I hope that was good. Maybe I should increase that time that last time from 60 to something else. But it's close enough. I think it's gonna simulate um, some kind of workflow. Now, if you have any suggestions on how to improve this, let me know. We'd love to see a better implementation of this if you already have one. And if you want me to compare this on the M1 Max versus the Mac Studio, the M1 Ultra, also leave a comment down below. If you like this video, appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks folks, I'll see you later.